All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's going to be too late for the unsaved. Nobody will have the opportunity to get saved after that moment. to get saved okay so uh, to me i love this song uh you know back from when i was a the young fella um and it's comparable in my mind in my imagination to the what i teach in regards to it's too late for the unsaved to get saved when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there is no more opportunity the time is out it's over and so all these people teaching this idea that you'll get one more opportunity after Jesus comes they're all liars deceivers and there's nothing more cruel wicked that anybody could ever teach on the earth today it's like telling your child your child can wait and then when your child waits he finds out dad lied it's too late I should have done it right then and there it's just extremely cruel and I, yeah, that's the world we're in right now though isn't it we've got essentially all these preachers in all the communities all around the world teaching this idea of dispensationalism well you can get saved during this time this way and then there's coming another dispensation later well you'll have another opportunity to get saved that, that's just wickedness cruel i mean it's, it's forgive me for saying this but it's stupid it's stupid it is all right, so talking about stupid, all right, I'm going to stay on that same uh, line of thought, I guess, the line of thought of stupidity. Now, David Carrico, he's doing a great job of talking about uh, the subject of, uh, I don't know, you know, 27 minutes in, I'm, I'm still not sure what he's saying. He spends a lot of time talking about things that are not true up to this point, which is fine. But I think it's also equally and more so important to talk about the truth. All right, so there's the spirit of error, and then there's the spirit of truth. And then Brian Reese here. I was kind of interested in, in what David Carrico's thoughts were regarding the first resurrection. I'm still not sure what, he, what his thoughts are, but uh, once I heard Brian speaking, I had to give it up. It's just, he just jumped off the deep end, and maybe if you look at him, look at these movie theater glasses that he wears... Uh, you know, probably should have been the first uh, red flag, the first indicator. This guy's wanting to jump into the deep end. Okay, and it's interesting because I was just talking to uh, my cousin last night. And he said he's going to go shoot some pool. And he, for whatever reason, showed me a picture of him wearing sunglasses and asked me what I thought. And I, I told him. Suspicious is what I thought. I said, anybody that wears sunglasses indoors, suspicious. 
So uh, me and him have a lot of fun that way. We talk directly. We don't beat around the bush. We're very direct with one another. We and we um, we love one another. We and we we just laugh a lot and we're silly and all that sort of stuff. But we're direct, very direct. And he's direct with me. I'm direct with him. And I'm being a. It's funny, but also true. Why would you wear sunglasses indoors? Well, my cousin has a reason. And maybe uh, this gentleman does too. Okay, I get it. Some people are sensitive to light. I get it. Still suspicious, right? I used to wear sunglasses indoors. I did. When I didn't want anybody to see how red my eyes were. Hmm? Anyways. Anyways, uh, what I want to uh, share with you, okay, well, first of all, let me just finish this thought. The first resurrection, of course, is Jesus. You know, that it should be more than obvious. <clears throat> I don't know how, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know how anybody misses it, really. I mean, it's so overwhelmingly obvious, right? In Revelation 1, Revelation 1, Jesus is referred to as the first begotten of the dead. If I remember correctly, exactly, the first begotten of the dead, right? In 1 Corinthians 15, Jesus is referred to as the first fruits of them that slept, all right? And in John 11, Jesus himself says... I am the resurrection. All right, and then, of course, in Revelation 20, blessed and, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the first begotten of the dead. The first fruits of them that slept. The resurrection, the first resurrection. I don't know how you miss it, honestly. There's no evidence... Nothing at all to support this idea that Jesus is not the first resurrection. There's no indication, nothing suggested, implied whatsoever about this idea of one resurrection and then later on another resurrection. And I know the mind-numbingly ignorant, stupid argument that, well, the first resurrection is believers, and then the, later on, a thousand years later, is another resurrection of unbelievers. No, that's stupid. Uh, you ain't put no thought into it. Your brain is dead, if that's what you're going to teach. All right, so for a thousand years, which it's unprecedented, this idea. For a thousand years, unsaved people are going to be living with absolutely no chance to get saved. I mean, they got a chance to get saved now, don't they? If they repent and turn and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They got an opportunity right now. What you're saying is there's coming a thousand year period when the unsaved won't have any opportunity to get saved at all. and then But somehow they're going to get resurrected only to get killed? What? Yeah, I don't think you guys put any thought into that at all. I mean, there's high IQ, medium IQ, low IQ, and then there's no IQ at all. And this, this sort of teaching goes below that. And to a realm that nobody can even comprehend because it's so doggone stupid now, i'm not kidding you what are you teaching man I, talk about it. that's what you believe talk about it all right talk about it. tell me explain to me walk me through this idea of a thousand year period where afterwards the unsaved get resurrected and killed it's stupid yeah, i mean doggone stupid it's it's it, 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 it <laughs> It signifies to me, shows me, 
reveals to me that you have absolutely no idea what the Bible says, no understanding, and you don't believe a word of it. That's what it shows me. All right. I get fired up sometimes. People are out of their minds. Uh, out of their minds. Now, talking about out of their minds, uh, this fellow Brian Reese, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But here's another example of, of somebody that's out of their mind. Is This ain't so bad. Right, it's bad. But it's not so bad. I mean, at least... At the very least, you could say, well, there's zero IQ into what he's about to say. To whereas this idea of a second resurrection a thousand years later of the unsaved, that, there, that goes below zero IQ. All right. This here, this, this stuff here, this is fantasy land stuff that Brian's about to. I better play it so you understand. This is fantasy land, kid stuff. A dope smoker's paradise kind of stuff. All right, now just listen up. They don't see spiritual applications. They don't see what's going on. Their head's on a swivel and it's turned around 720, 24-7, and they can't articulate their realm, right? They're like, oh, that ain't real. This ain't real. There's aliens now, right? So they, they don't understand. There's aliens now, right? No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that's that's what they say. I think about this. I, I want you to, if you don't have any oxygen going through your brain right now, just take a deep breath and relax, okay? I mean, when you think about it, there's nothing more, no, nothing more important than the truth. So, you got nothing to be afraid of right now, okay? You know, you don't need to be scared. All right, just calm down, relax understand the fallen angels they don't understand any kind of principalities wickedness darkness ephesians 6 they don't understand any of it because okay just to recap i gotta play this again for you so you can grasp what he's saying on oh, their heads on a swivel and it's turned around 720 24 7 and they can't articulate their realm right they're like oh that ain't real this ain't real there's aliens now right so they they don't understand the fallen angels they don't understand any kind of principalities wickedness darkness ephesians 6 they don't understand any of it because all right that's enough. That's that's enough right there. Okay. You just you done lost me for the entire episode because of that ridiculous statement right there. Well you might be thinking, well, Jimmy, what's so what's so significant about that? Fallen angels? That's red flag. Red flag. That's a conversation killer. Now you spend twenty five minutes talking about the word of God, and then the first thing that comes to your mind is fallen angels. There's something wrong. That's all. It's a red flag. Now, what I want to do is talk about that just for a second. Yeah, I, I was going to keep this down to f under 15 minutes. I'm going to really try. I don't know how long it's been now. I'm going to try to make this real short. Okay, so red flag, fallen angels. First of all, the reason it's a red flag is I'm not, you know, I'm not going to accuse this guy of claiming, I'm not going to say he claims that fallen angels are sons of God, but quite clearly, people that teach fallen angel stuff teach that fallen angels are sons of God, all right? And I'm going to tell you right now, right up front, angels are not sons of God. Okay? I'm a son of God. And believe me, I'm no angel. Okay? Genesis 6. It's very important, I think, to not let these deceivers fool you. What does God say? Well, God says in Genesis 6, It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God... Now we can draw a parallel, a, draw a line, connect the dot here from men to sons of God. So there should be no doubt whatsoever that sons of God are men. I mean, that should be case closed right there. 
Now, the word sons also indicates a male man, right? A, a male human, if you will. All right? Yeah, sons, uh, this is not rocket science, okay? Sons indicates males. Daughters indicates, anybody want to take a guess? Yeah, that's right, you got it. Females. Huh? It's not rocket science. So right here in verse 1 when it says men, and then verse 2 says sons of God, same thing. Sons of God are men. Men are sons of God. Okay? Back in the time before the flood. Daughters in verse 1, and daughters of men in verse 2, uh, parallel. All right, so the daughters of men, they're daughters of men until men, until their father gives them in marriage. All right, it's not rocket science, is it? It's not hard to figure out. All right, in verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, that they and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, if you consider this, you'll, you understand it pretty easily that these men were taking wives of all which they chose. In other words, they had more than one wife. They were full of perversion and obviously out of control. Okay. And it, we're gonna, it's going to tell us exactly the problem that's going on here, right? The Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. All right, because this, is, this here in verse 2 is a big indicator for a big problem. All right? And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Now notice that. Did you fall asleep already? Hello, wake up. Are you there? Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Remember, two seconds ago, this guy talking about fallen angels. Uh, you notice here that the Lord says, My spirit shall not always strive with fallen angels. No, 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 no. The problem isn't fallen angels. Man, what's the matter with you? Look, if you don't see it, there's something wrong with your heart. There's a reason you don't see it. It's very obvious. And that's why I'm, I'm going to plead with you to, to start to believe in God. Because obviously you don't. Obviously. If you're teaching, fallen angels are sons of God. Okay? You're not, you're not even close. You have no idea. You can lie all you want. Lie to yourself. Really. That's all you're doing. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. A man born of God. Is going to say. The sons of God are fallen angels. There ain't no way. There ain't no possible way. That, that only comes from the devil. And all the children of the devil. Alright. So if you're disguised as one of us. You're going to reveal yourself when you make the claim that sons of God are fallen angels. I'm going to see right through it. All right, And you're going to fool the people that are just like you. That you don't recognize yourself. That they're also wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. Uh, you're going to fool one another. That's fine. Play the little game. You're not fooling me. Okay. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. If you, if you can't figure out what a man is, then God help you. Okay? For that he also is flesh. Man is flesh. All right, man. So right here, boom. There's no possible, not a possibility that this is talking about fallen angels. It, it, it's not saying, My spirit shall not always strive with fallen angel. Come on, man. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants. Oh, well, wait a second. There were giants in those days. Oh, well, we know what that is. Like that changes something. Uh, oh, oh, and also after that. Oh, well, that kind of. 
well that kind of throws everything out of order doesn't it or not no well what that means is you can no longer use this idea that giants are UFO aliens okay or fallen angels or none of that there were giants before and there are giants after all right so this idea that the well I mean think about it well, there were fallen angels. Let's just play along. Okay, there were fallen angels in the time of Noah before the flood. And God said, I got to destroy these guys. And so God destroys these guys and everything on earth. And then these guys, these UFO aliens, they're still alive after the flood. God did, killed billions of people in vain. I mean, look, if that's what you believe, just be honest about it. But I'm telling you right now, you're not going to fool me. You're just going to reveal yourself as somebody that's not saved. And you're going to be get attracted by unsaved people. I mean, un people, unsaved people will listen and pat you on the back and all that sort of stuff and agree with you. It's not true at all. Right. You get the majority of people on the earth will agree with you. Billions of people will agree with you. But it still won't be true. All right. so now, listen. Okay, There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God, this goes back to verse 2, sons of God, verse 1, men. All right, so we got men, sons of God, man, flesh, giants, sons of God. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, see, that's male and that's female. All right, I don't know if you can figure that out. You got to have an IQ above zero. It takes effort. And they bear children. See, what happens in Genesis 3, that God put the curse on man that they be fruitful and multiply in thy sorrow. Oh, I wish I could remember every single verse in the Bible. I really do. In sorrow thou shalt. In sorrow. Oh, in sorrow. In sorrow. In sorrow, I, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Okay, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Right, in sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. And they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So notice here. When we're talking about giants, who are we talking about? Well, we've got to be talking about sons of God, which has to be man, men. Men, man, sons. Men, sons, man, flesh, sons, daughters of men, children. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, mighty men, men of renown, Oh, well, that's talking about you up my and fallen angels and Nephilims. What? Are you really that stupid? Am I being too hard with my words? I mean, seriously. There's something wrong with your heart, man. If you're reading that and you're imagining fallen angels. You deserve it. You deserve to be delusional. You really do. And I'll tell you, let me give you one good solid reason why I don't have any compassion for these guys at all. What they're saying is sons of God are fallen angels. I'm a son of God. So you what? You call me a fallen angel? Is that what you're saying? Huh? You're saying I'm a fallen angel. You're not just saying... Sons of God, you're not just saying they're angels. You're calling us, the believers, the elect in God. 
You're calling us evil. And you think you're being cute about it. All right, well, we're going to find out. We're going to see how cute it gets, right? We're going to see how cute you think you are when the day comes. All right, when that day comes, we'll see how cute you are, how funny and giggly you are. So I'm supposed to be all goo goo. Oh, he did front. He be doesn't match. That's just bo 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 bo. Well, you know what? It's interesting, isn't it? Because in verse six, when God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, these people calling the sons of God fallen angels are wicked. And what's the problem in the whole thing here? In the whole thing, the whole thing that we're reading. What's going on? What's the issue? What's the issue? Why is God going to destroy the earth? Somehow, you still think, oh, blah, 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 fallen angel, you are fallen angel, you blah, 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 Nephilim. But that, none of that's even implied. The sole purpose, or I'm sorry, the sole problem is man. And specifically in verse 5, it says, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. There's the problem right there. It's not UFO, alien, Nephilim, fallen angels. It's the human heart. That's the problem. And so God saw that and said, I'm going to have to destroy this place. I'm going to have to tear it down. He, he, tear, he tears it down with water, and, and he's going to tear it down again. He's going to burn this place. All right. And that's very obvious, very clear. And it's all throughout the Scripture. That one place I like to really point to that really makes it super plain is second peter chapter 3 the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men this here the perdition of ungodly men that's talking about you guys that preach fallen angel stuff that's that's exactly who it's talking about now look, I get it. You you got a whole bunch of people on your side. You got a billion people that support your teaching. I get it. But you're all going to hell. You're all destined for hell. Unless you change your ways, man. Unless you change your ways and, and turn to God and believe God. It's your only chance, man. It's your only chance. The problem is now, I can get into uh, real quickly, uh, real quickly, if we go to, uh, let me go to, uh, is it Revelation 3? Yeah. In Revelation 3, it says, uh, because you're lukewarm, uh, I would rather you be cold or hot I would thou work I would thou work cold or hot but because you're lukewarm you're pretending to be a Christian and you're not you're floating in between trying to gain popularity trying to look good to those around you trying to present yourself as a holy person all right you're not on fire and you're not cold down in the dumps. All right? Because you're in that lukewarm area, you're in trouble. All, right? and all these people that go to church and don't believe in, don't really believe in God, they are in, they're the worst of the worst. They got essentially no chance. Your chance, those people that live under a bridge, those people that walk around homeless, they got a chance. Because they're cold. There's a chance that they come to the realization 
that they need a Savior. Okay? Those people that go to church, they think they're righteous. They, th they think they're already saved. They got no chance. Really. I mean, they do, but they don't. It's better to be flat broke, hit rock bottom, than it is to... You okay, buddy? Than it is to grow up in a church. Okay? This stuff's getting wild out here. Okay, so... Uh, so that's... I mean, that's it. And a repent of the Lord... That he made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Oh, I thought we were talking about fallen angel UFO alien Nephilims. Huh? Ah, you people are stupid. Ah, that's all. Ah, that's all. I can. can I be nice anymore? Can I still be nice? Because these guys are calling sons of God, which I'm a son of God, He's calling me a fallen angel, and then you want to turn around and say, I got to be nice? I got to be nice? Are you kidding me? He's calling God a liar. He's, he's lying about the word of God. He's calling us that are born of God fallen angels, and I, I'm the bad guy. Because I say that's, these guys are stupid, and, and they're on their way to hell. Man, think about that, man. And the reason I say that is because I care about these guys. I care about you. And I want you guys to wake up and realize, hey, man, this stuff is evil. I, look, I get it, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that used to teach Jesus Christ was an UFO alien. That the angels of God were are UFO aliens. I, I was the guy arguing. Just like I'm arguing right now with the same kind of language and the same kind of fire. But boy, oh boy, was I wrong, huh? And thanks, thank, thanks to God that I was wrong. I'm thankful that I was wrong because all I care about is the truth. And I reckon at the end of the day, the only one that can show you the truth is God. The Spirit of God. And so that's what I, I'm hoping to shake, rattle some cages here. I want to rattle your cage and say, hey, look, think about it. Think about it. What are you teaching? What are you believing? First of all, what do you believe? Where are you getting this idea of UFO, alien, Nephilim, fallen angel stuff? Man, it's not there at all. It's all about man. It's all about man. All right, so that's my best advice for you is to consider what the Word of God actually says. Just think for a moment. What if, what if the Bible was true? Huh? 